So if you're putting the casement on this door, the first thing you want to do is measure each leg. We don't know how to install this door, so it might be a little off square. So don't assume that the height of this is the same as the height of this. So what I do is generally you want to have some kind of reveal off of the casement. I generally do 3 16 of an inch. That gives it plenty of space to give it that nice look. So whatever the measurement is from the floor to the bottom of the casement, measure that and then add 3 16 to your length. And then whatever the measurement is from here to here, you add that together, 3 16 plus 3 16 to give you those two reveals. And that's the length of the top one. So the first one is 81 and a half for the right leg. And yep, as I said, this one is 81 and a quarter for the left leg. And again, it might not just be the, the installer. It could also be the floor itself. You know, in that three foot length of the width of the door, there might be some different heights of that floor, you know? So make sure you get specific measurements for each leg. And this is 32. All right. So as I said, for 32, we're going to add 3 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths, which will give us 3 eighths. So that number is going to be 32 and 3 eighths. We're going to do the right leg first. Again, that number was 81 and a half from the floor to the bottom of the casement. I'm going to add 3 sixteenths to give me that reveal. So I'll be at 81 and 3 quarters light. So I always mark the inside. The inside of the trim right there. I want to set the saw, saw to my 45 degree angle and I'll cut that. My left leg was 81 and a quarter long. I'm going to add 3 sixteenths to that, so that's going to be 81 and a half light. Make sure your saw is at a 45. Alright, now for the top piece of casement. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just cut a 45 on one end. And one of the tricks I like to do, it's tough to really have your tape hook on that. So what I do is I put the end of the trim at the end of my saw table and now I can actually hook on the saw table itself. And that last number, it was 32 on the inside of the casement, 3 16 reveal on both sides, that's going to give me 32 and 3 eighths. So for all my casement, I always use a joiner so I can put the biscuits inside the trim. Um, just quickly going over a joiner. This one in particular, it actually has a gauge right there. It says number 10 on it. I'm not sure if you can really make that out. Um, you could turn it. It's zero, max. There's also a adjustment for the 20. Now, I got mine on 10. That's because I'm going to be using the number 10 size biscuits right here. All right. So that's what that's all about. Um, if you look in here, there's an actual view hole that they, they put into this joiner. So that's exactly where you want the middle of your line to be on your casement. And if you don't know how a joiner works, you line up the line, you push, and the blade comes through. You see right here. Okay. Also on this side, these are the adjustments for the actual degrees of the plate. So you can, you can, you know, you can adjust how far forward and back. And this level right here, that's to adjust the height of this plate, which will give you exactly where that blade is going to be hitting into your trim. So generally what I do is I'll measure the trim itself. 
you can see here. The middle of this trim is about half, half of an inch. So if I want to get the blade in the middle, I set that depth to about one quarter of an inch. Uh, take a scrap piece and make sure that you do a couple of test cuts before you get into the stuff that you actually want because the blade might be a little off, your gauge might be a little off and you're gonna screw yourself. And quickly, um, I'll just explain how I do the lines. So this is a two and a half inch piece of stock casement, right? But when you cut it, but when you cut it, because you had a 45, that's three and a half, all right? So half of three and a half is inch and three quarters. So I measured down from inch and three quarters and that's the midpoint of this casement. Then you just grab your square, tight and draw your line. Okay, and that's how I got that line. So that's the midpoint line. And as I told you earlier, that little viewfinder in there with the little red dot, that's gonna go inside there. I'm gonna see exactly where that midpoint line is. And then I'm gonna push my saw up and make that cut. Pretty straightforward. So I clamped this casement onto the plywood. You wanna clamp tight. Again, this is a pretty dangerous tool and you want your cut to be precise. So make sure everything's kind of locked in, all right? I'm gonna put an extra clamp down here. Just make sure I'm good. I got that viewfinder right there. I'm gonna line up my arrow with the mark that I pre-made and the depth I already tried it out, it's gonna work perfect. So I'm gonna go for my cut. Turn it on. Line up the viewfinder. And do the plunge. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's the plunge cut in the middle, all right? So I'm gonna put some glue in there, the biscuit, and then I'll attach your other pieces. But that's what we're going for. Again, just line up with the viewfinder to the line you already marked. Turn your gun on. Second one. I just want to mention it's super important to make sure that you're at the midpoint of all of your trends. Um, so when you put the joiner cut in, all your pieces will line up perfectly with that biscuit. If you're if you're just a little bit off e either way, that biscuit's not gonna line up with your other trims and then you're gonna have a real poor uh, connection there. So make sure you're right at the halfway point. So applying the biscuits is straightforward. As I said, I have the 10 size biscuits right here. Um, put some glue inside that track that you already drilled out. the biscuit in. All right. Put glue in the other, this is the top casement piece. Put glue in that as well. And you also want to add glue to the actual, the face of, of your cut. All right, don't be crazy with it, but a little bit like that. Now, I used to have Hartford clamps. If you don't know what those are, I'll probably uh, put a little picture of them, but they're awesome. Um, I'm actually from Hartford. The company was based in East Hartford, Connecticut that made them. They're uh, like a cast iron clamp that would grab these casement miters and lock them into place. Long story short, they're about 80, 90 bucks each now, and they got stolen. So I don't know if the company's making them anymore, but I can't find them anywhere. So. I don't have any clamps to lock these in place, but... As I was saying, just glue that in there. You lock in your casement like this. And it should be pretty, pretty good right there. What I'm going to do is, with my brad nailer, I'm just going to put one brad nail. Boom, boom, boom. I got three quarter brads. And that should lock it in. The biscuit's doing most of the work. Alright? It's locking it. It's not gonna in place in every which angle, so it's not gonna move on me. So make sure you have a nice tight corner there, right on top. Boom. One there, one on this side, should lock it in nicely. All right, now I'm gonna do the other side. 
And then if you let this set up for about half an hour, 45 minutes, that glue should be set up enough and then you can grab the whole piece as one and I'll be shooting it on the door. So let me go do the other side now. So the piece dried for about one hour. The glue's tight, the biscuits are in there solid. Um, now you just want to kind of dry fit it and then I'm going to use an inch and a half trim nails. My gun's already loaded and I'm going to shoot the inside first. And once I do that, I'll switch over to two and a half nails and I'll put a couple of nails on the outside. So dry fit in the hole with your thumbs, get an equal reveal on both sides like that. Looks good. Take your gun. Now as you go down, you want to make sure that the reveal is um, the same going all the way down both sides. So you want to have to move the trim a little bit back and forth to get that clean reveal. So work with it. Generally, I put three uh, inches to half nails on the top. One, two, three, sometimes four. And the same thing with this. Um, sometimes you might have to have a little hump. You can either push the casing down or push it up a little bit. Just work with it. Now I'm going to switch over from my inch and a half nails to my two and a half nails. I use the inch and a half on the inside. Those baits are just going to attach to the jam from the door. The two and a halfs are going to actually hit the studs. The studs on both sides and the header through the header above the door. Hi. It's already locked in, so I just kind of got a nail down. Four to five nails should be sufficient. It looks like I put six nails, so probably do six nails equally space them, and the top four should be enough. All right, so I'm gonna get the putty. I'll fill all the nail holes with putty. I'll run a bead of caulk on the inside, a bead of caulk on the outside, and then I'll paint the whole thing in a satin white, and that should finish that off. So that's the basics of how you put a casement trim on any kind of door.